Hi, welcome to the Perm Show. My name is Amy. Today we are at the United Methodist Church in Perm. I am joined with Judy Lytteller. She is the secretary of the United Methodist Women. And you guys have your annual pillow cleaning event coming up. Yes, we do. On Wednesday, the 21st, we have our pillow cleaning from 8 until 4 in the okay. afternoon. And people are free to bring in their pillows the day before if they're working that day. And okay. we'll be here from oh, 05 until 7 in the evening and uh, take in the pillows and then they can pick them up the next day. Uh, okay. They can also pick them up the same day when they bring them in in the morning. Sure, so they can bring them the night before or they can bring them that day, then they can just come back that same day or the next day if they bring them the night before and pick right. them up and we'll be all cleaned for them. Correct. Why don't you kind of tell us the process of how they clean them? I know you've been kind of involved for a few years. Yes, I have. They have a truck that comes in. Okay. Um, Mr. Carlson comes and, and he actually puts the, the, all the feathers into this ultraviolet machine and it takes out all the dander and kills all the germs and then he puts it in brand new ticking. Okay. And you get to pick the ticking. So they have several different styles and separate, several different um, qualities of, sure. of ticking so that feathers don't come through and things like that. And he'll put extra, extra feathers in your pillows if you need a little more substance okay. or maybe take some out if they're too hard. Sure. Um, he can do a lot of different things, even down comforters. Okay. He has done. Oh, nice. So okay. just about anything. Now, is there a charge for this or a donation? Oh, yes. Yeah. No, there's a definite charge. Okay. And it varies depending on the size of the pillow and the size of the sure. uh, what you want it added and whatnot. Okay. And then if you don't have a feather pillow, you can purchase one too from him, correct? Correct. Okay. He has, he has some here on display that you can look at in different sizes from a travel pillow all the way up to a, a queen or a okay. king size. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, this event is this Wednesday, so it's coming up pretty quick. It is. Um, but if you miss it this Wednesday, you have a list there of where he's going to be um, after he's in Purim, correct? He'll, yes. On Thursday, he'll be in Wadena at the VFW, and then he'll be in Bertha on Friday and Battle Lake on Saturday at the Lions Park. Okay. So you can pick it up if you missed it someplace, but he comes every year to the Perm United Methodist Church. Okay, and why don't you just tell people um, your address so they, they know where to find you? We're a half a block east of uh, Service Foods on, on uh, 4th Avenue. Perfect, and if they have any questions, should they call here? They certainly can. They okay. can call the church, 346-7420. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much for being here today, Judy. We Thank sure appreciate you. it. Hi, welcome back. I am now joined with Pastor Jerry. You are the new pastor here at the United Methodist Church. Yes, I've been here for two weeks now. Two weeks. Yes. Okay, well, welcome to the area. Thank you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Well, my background primarily was in education, actually. Okay. I served as a teacher and school administrator in Minnesota schools. Um, I was on faculty at Oklahoma State University and the University of North Dakota. And then I received a call to ministry about 12 years ago and oh, okay. left my position at the university and uh, have been serving the church ever since. Uh, right. Most recently, I was in Grand Forks as okay. pastor at Wesley United Methodist Church. I served there for eight years. Okay. And then uh, retirement beckoned, so I thought, well, I would, I would retire. And uh, my retirement had been announced for about two weeks when our church's district superintendent from northern Minnesota called me and asked me if I would like to uh, come to Perham and Dent, Minnesota as pastor on a part-time basis. Okay. And, uh, that was kind of uh, interesting and uh, beckoning because we have a cabin over by Detroit Lake. So oh, right perfect. now I'm commuting from the cabin and when okay. it gets cold then I'll move to Perm. Okay, so you've been coming up to this area for a long time then? We've been here uh, in that cabin for 18 years. So. Okay, okay, perfect. So you're in just in a couple weeks into it, but this is going to be um, kind of a part-time position then? Well, part-time is uh, kind of a uh, a question mark as sure. to exactly what that means. I've had two funerals already since I okay. came here. So, uh, but uh, I'm busy getting to know the community and getting Perfect. to know the people, and I'd love to have people stop by and get to know us. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much for being here today. We sure appreciate it, it's and welcome to the community. It's my privilege and pleasure. Thank All you. All right, Pastor Jerry Bass from the United Methodist Church. Um, if you have anything you would like featured on the Perm Show, feel free to give me a call at 218-209-0453. Hi, welcome back to the Perm Show. We are at the city offices downtown Perm. I am joined by Chuck Johnson. Thanks for being here today, Chuck. Thank you. Good. Well, you're going to kind of give us um, a city update here. You're going to talk about some different phases, some that have just wrapped up, 
and then kind of what we're going to be going into, you know, yep. this year. So. It's, it's been two just remarkably busy years of construction in Purim. Uh, there was, at, at the end of 2012, there was a rush of activity that got completed into 2013. A lot of things have occurred here in 20, are occurring in 2013. And I think there's going to be some startups that are going to occur later this year that are going to carry forward into 2014. The, the carryovers that are from last year to this year, there, there's three projects to talk about there. The Brew is, is the downtown bar and eatery. Uh, that was a really nice project because they got rid of a really ugly building downtown. Yeah, it was yeah. a nice they project. They did a really nice job with it. Yeah. Nice job. And, and uh, the United Community Bank uh, expansion uh, started last year and carried over into this year. The nice thing about those two projects is they, they helped to extend Main Street, the, the core Main Street area. The Brew helped to extend towards the east and the UCB extend toward the west. The, the third project that was a sort of a 2012 carrying over into 13 was the Goose Gang project on 3rd Avenue where uh, the, uh, the Wild Goose split their operation and expanded it and opened the, the ice cream shop and, and, and gift shop. Yeah. Lots of things have been taking place here in, in 2013. The big sewage pond project is coming to a close uh, as we speak. The big pond is, is the last phase of that. There's a 20 acre pond that's uh, been constructed. They're putting a liner in it right now. It's a, it's a 100 mil uh, high density polyethylene liner, sort of indestructible liner that's going into okay. it. It's a monstrous pond. It's, it's 20 acres, and that's basically the size of, of three city blocks and three city blocks. Wow. It's, it's just a really large uh, operation. Um, United Community Bank building, of course, they've moved into the new yeah. facility. Their existing or former UCB building is being purchased by Con Compass Consultants, which has been in the Arvig building since they came to town, oh, about 15 years ago. Arvig, or uh, Compass, is in the process as we speak, is, is renovating the UCB building and be moving into that. Uh, the water tower project is well underway right now. Uh, you're, traditionally, that, that, the water tower on the south side by the elementary school has been sort of a powder blue. It's being painted black, and it is, it is mostly painted black right now, and it'll have the uh, Yellow Jacket logo painted oh, on it. Nice. It's gonna be really cool, yeah. because when you're driving down Highway 10 at night, of course, it's lit at night, yeah. and, and uh, it'll be lit, and, and, and I think that, that Yellow Jacket logo is gonna stand, stand out. out. Yeah. It, it's gonna be really cool. Oh, nice. um, couple of city projects that are coming, that'll be starting here very soon. Uh, the, there's a rebuild that's occurring on Third Avenue South, Southwest, okay. um, it, it'll be a total rebuild. Uh, the street will get tore up, and the infrastructure will be replaced. And uh, also, the parking lots that are that lie between Main Street and the railroad tracks are going to all be repaved, starting at Photo Magic and running all the way down to Ma's Little Red Barn. Sure. That whole thing that'll be taking place after Labor Day. It was pushed as late as possible, so it would sure. be the least disruptive possible. Um, that's, that's things that are underway right now. Um, and, then, and then I think there's gonna be some things, some startups that are gonna sure. be occurring here later this construction season that'll carry over. Um, there's a couple large industrial projects. One of them is a, is a major expansion at IFS, the Industrial Finishing Services in the industrial park. Uh, there's another really big industrial project that I, that I expect uh, will be launching um, in the next several weeks. Uh, there's uh, a couple commercial projects. In, fa in fact, there's another industrial project that's in the very early tire kicking stages right now. I can't talk about it. Um, there's a couple commercial projects that are in the tire kicking stage. I think one of those is, is in the pretty likely stage right now. One of them is still fairly early tire kicking. Uh, the Green Spire building, uh, he's been having his going out of yeah. business sale. Uh, he has a buyer in place. And, and uh, that'll be, the, the, the deal on that will be closing pretty soon. The buyer has three interested parties right now, and they would be renting that to any of those three parties. So that, that's a good sign. When, when, when that vacancy was created by the going out of business yeah. sale at Greenspire, and, and it, uh, it's gonna fill up very rapidly. That's great. It, it, it's interesting, Amy, if you look at those three phases, the carryover from last year plus the current year, 
plus what's starting up and moving forward, um, the, the total price tag of all the above is very close to $100 million worth wow. of construction. And, and that, that part of that is, is building construction, and, and a couple of those projects are going to have a real high equipment quotient for them. But if you add the building and the equipment for all those projects, it's very close to $100 wow, million dollars worth of, of, of stuff. So sure. it's, it's two very busy years in yeah, Peron. Yeah, it sounds like it. Well, Chuck, thanks so much for the update today. We sure yeah, appreciate sure. it. Yeah. And we'll have you on again, and you can give us another update in a few months. Good. All yeah, right. Th thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here today. Chuck Johnson with the City of Perham. If you have something that you would like featured on the Perham Show, feel free to give me a call at 218-209-0453. Thanks.